Welcome back to the Survivalist 2008 channel. Today we'll cover part one of the 80 through 6 meter off center fed dipole for SHTF and backpacking. It's all stored on a fishing reel. This video is part of a series of videos that I am producing that covers the SHTF or backpacking ham radio station that you can carry in a portable manner. What you're looking at here is the finished product of the antenna. This is all stored on a very small manual fly fishing reel. A little electrical tape keeps both elements snugly in place. Literally, the entire antenna system would fit in a pocket. It weighs in total at 16.1 ounces. The ballon, which I've already done a video on previously, weighs in at 3.5 ounces. The coax, which is very small, RG174, a 30-foot length, weighs in at only 4.8 ounces and the antenna on the reel weighs in at 7.8 ounces. Parts are easy to gather. I chose 22 gauge magnet wire with an enamel coating because it's very lightweight. I picked up a roll of 25 pound monofilament fishing line at Walmart. Then I grabbed a couple of horseshoe connectors out of my toolbox. Now you'll want to cut your first length of 22 gauge enamel magnet wire at 46 feet 9 and 1 half inches long. The second leg of the antenna will be 83 feet 2 and 1 half inches long. Now strip the enamel off one end of both wires solder a U-lug on each wire and you're set to go. On the other ends of each wire tie a tiny loop in the wire then tie on a 10 foot length of 25 pound monofilament fishing line. This will act as an insulator as well as a tie off point. Then on the ends of the fishing line tie on tiny fishing snap swivels. You can now wrap the fishing line around a branch, then use the snap to secure the line back on itself. Now it's time to grab your ballon and coax and get ready to go outside to put the antenna up. I made up about a 60 foot length of mason's twine. Grab a small nylon bag, put some rocks in it, clip on a carabiner and hook that onto your mason's twine and then toss that over the nearest 25 foot branch. Once you get the line over the branch it's easy to use a carabiner to snap on the ballon. I used a small bungee cord at the top to act as a strain relief. I also tied on a couple of small cable ties to act as strain reliefs for the wires. Then I loosened the binding post routed the wires through the cable ties and tightened the binding post down. Then it's time to hoist the ballon up to the 25 foot limb leaving it maybe about a foot below the limb. I had an easy tile point nearby on a nearby saw buck. One leg of the dipole went almost to the road and I tied it off to the light post. The second leg of the dipole went out to the woods and got tied off to a tree branch. This basically formed an inverted V antenna with each ends of the antenna maybe five, six, seven feet off the ground. Now it's time to start testing the antenna using my antenna tester and SWR meter. This off-center fed dipole is primarily designed to work on 75, 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. I think the antenna will also tune up on 6 meters. However, I went ahead and tested the antenna on 8 different bands. Take a look at the photographs and look at the left hand meter. The lower the reading on the SWR meter on the left, the better. The right hand meter measures the resistance and it's sometimes difficult to get that near 50 ohms.
Next, I placed my MFJ 945E manual antenna tuner in line and tuned the antenna for 75, 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. Each band tuned up exceptionally well, and I'll let you take a look at the results. Well, we've got the station hooked up now. Got it hooked up to the portable antenna. The antenna is up about 25 feet. I've got one leg of the antenna tied off to a tree out this way. And then I have the other leg of the antenna, which is the longer leg, tied off to the front out to a telephone pole. So it's a nice inverted V configuration. I do have the AC power supply out here to today. I don't have the 12 volt battery right now. I just mainly want to test the antenna. So what we're going to be doing is tuning through some of the bands and see if I can find the station to work. And if I can, I'll bring you back and let you listen in. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'd like to give a demonstration of how a manual antenna tuner works. And I heard a station just a few moments ago on 7.170 megahertz who was calling CQ. And uh, we're going to see if I can tune the antenna up so that I might be able to try to work him if he's still on frequency. So basically what I'll have to do is, with the radio off, disconnect the coax back here. And it's um, a, little bit of a, a little bit of a chore with a manual tuner. But the main thing is you've got to get the antenna uh, tuned with the antenna tuner so the proper amount of signal from your radio will go out to the antenna. So what I do is I hook up my antenna an analyzer which mimics that particular frequency and we've got it set up over here to uh, 7168, that's close enough. And right now it's about a 1.7 to 1. But I think I can do better than that. I'm going to try to get this to the lowest SWR that I can. So what I'll do is I'll adjust first the inductor knob on the antenna tuner and see if I can get it to go down anymore. And then, let's try it here. And then I will take the transmitter and antenna match uh, knobs over here and work them together in tandem to try to get this down to the lowest SWR as that I can. Okay, it's starting to dip a little. Went down. Dip nicely. Okay, I don't know if you can see this SWR meter, but I've got it close here and just a little more tweaking. It's down to 1.2 to 1, which is really pretty close. The lower, the better, but uh, 1.2, 1.3 to 1 is fine for right now. Get a little bit of inductance coupling when I'm touching it, especially since this setup is not really grounded except through the AC uh, line. That's uh, pretty good, 1.5 to 1. Not too bad. Alright, what I'll do is go ahead and turn the uh, Analyzer all, set it over here to the side, and make sure that this 
coax is connected back in properly because that's not good having the coax not connected. That's not good for the radio. Alright, the tuner is in tune mode and now I'm on frequency but it sounds like he's left. So I'm going to nose around and see if I can find somebody else. But that's basically the process of tuning your antenna tuner manually. Well, this completes part one, but check back in later for part two where I'll continue my discussion on antenna tuners and I'll make a live contact using the portable station. So thanks for watching and catch you later.